This is the Play Your Position podcast, where we huddle up, call the plays, and inspire you to run your ball into the end zone. Are you ready to score more game-winning touchdowns in your life, business, and career? Then listen up, because it's game time, baby. Now, here's your host, Mary Lou Kayser. Hello, everyone. Mary Lou Kayser here, and happy 2021. We are officially in the new year, which is apropos for the main content of today's episode, I am going to share a letter that I wrote to 2020 in a couple of minutes. I'm going to share that. Before I get to that, however, a couple of reminders. Number one, Elevate Your Expertise Leadership Mastery Program for Women. The early bird pricing is still on. It's good through January 15th. So you still have a good couple of weeks to take advantage of that. And guys, if you're listening to this and you know a fantastic woman who isn't quite showing up to her full potential, I would love to have a conversation with her to see if she might be a good fit for the program. And you can learn more about Elevate Your Expertise over at my sister site, which is MaryLouKayser.com, M-A-R-Y-L-O-U-K-A-Y-S-E-R.com. Second announcement is, this is kicking off a series that I am going to do throughout the entire year of 2021. And I'm framing the series around leadership survival skills for 21st century success. And each month, I'm going to be examining one of those key skills that is essential to functioning, to finding the work that we love, to taking care of ourselves, to showing up fully and being present and doing work that matters. All the good stuff, all the stuff that I talk about with my guests every week that I've been talking about now for the last seven years. And as I come up on my official seventh year anniversary here at PYP, entering my eighth year of podcasting, I think it's apropos to look at some of these big themes that continue to come up over and over and over again. As a former English teacher, I am a fan of themes. I love them. In fact, in one of my mastermind groups over the weekend, we were discussing themes and particularly around 2020, which in all fairness is what prompted me to write the letter. However, shout out to Jenny Davis, uh, one of my absolutely favorite people in the entire world, also happens to be a PYP MVP. You can uh, check out her episode in the archives. Jenny did something really cool in December of 2020. She sent out what she called a month of Advent questions related to reflecting on our professional lives. And if you are in business, her questions could be applied to a business venture. If you had a traditional or have a traditional career, you could certainly use these questions. They were fantastic. And one of them was, if 2020 were a person, what would you like to say to him or her or them is the lexicon of the day would be, what would you like to say to them? And I wrote uh, about a paragraph and I kept coming back to that question because when I wrote my answer, I immediately said, thank you, even though 2020 was hard. And what you're going to hear in the letter I'm about to share, you'll hear how gratitude is a central theme of the letter. And this month, I'm going to be exploring gratitude as a survival skill for 21st century success. I'm excited about this series. As usual, I would love your input. If you have an idea or you just want to give me, you know, have a dialogue with me about what you hear, um, add to the conversation, you can always reach me over at pypodcast.com. I'm also on the socials, LinkedIn, and Instagram primarily. So we'd love to engage with you about this new series. And again, I can't say enough about how excited I am about a new year, which again is the foundation for why 
I started the year and I want to start my year here at PYP with a letter of gratitude. So without further ado, team, here it is. I am going to, I won't sign off at the end. I'm just going to sign off the letter and then that will end the show. So look forward to seeing you in the next episode. But for now, here's my letter of gratitude to 2020. Dear 2020, in light of the recent change of year from you to 21, I'd like to take a moment to thank you for doing the best you could given what you were handed. No one anywhere will say that you were easy. Many have called you any number of names, including cruel, heartless, cold, insensitive, random, unfair, and mean. I'll be honest, despite my normally sunny disposition, there were times when I didn't like you and I cursed your existence. I cried my share of tears. However, as I write these words, I have a smile on my face. My heart isn't beating with resentment, bitterness, or a desire for revenge, even though you took things from me that were valuable. Rather, my heart is full of gratitude. Gratitude for creating circumstances I never would have chosen for myself. But in a strange twist of fate, they turned out to be exactly what I needed. Dear 2020, thank you for granting me time to think about my professional life, especially around what I'm supposed to be doing in it. Thank you for helping me figure out what I want from my life moving forward and why I do what I do. Thank you for helping more of us to understand what truly matters to us and what doesn't. Thank you for waking us up as a planet. Thank you for kicking us in the ass exactly where we needed it. Thank you for creating conditions that have fostered creativity, problem solving, and new ways of working together on common goals. In your darkest hours, you also offered us a light to guide us forward, to ask big questions, to wrestle with difficult answers. Without you, dear 2020, this new year would not feel as powerful and full of possibilities as it does. Frankly, I think at the rate we were going before you, this year would have been like all the others. We'd be celebrating in the usual ways, making the usual resolutions, setting the usual goals, headed in the same disastrous direction. Thanks to you though, this year is different. As time passes, your edges will soften, as edges always do with time. If we are smart, the lessons you taught us about love and forgiveness and community will stay front and center for the rest of our days. So, dear 2020, for all the sorrow and pain and disappointment you caused, you also opened us up for joy and delight and satisfaction in ways we have yet to experience in the years ahead. And for that, we have reason to celebrate you. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Love always, Mary Lou. P.S. I'm sorry for posting that mean meme on my Facebook page of a cartoon kid kicking you. I have deleted it and I'm working on not getting as caught up in the raw emotion of the moment that social media is so good at triggering. Got a great key offensive strategy you like to share? Write to us at coach at PYPpodcast.com or on Twitter, use hashtag PYP and let us know how you're running your ball into the end zone for those game-winning touchdowns.